Hi, I'm Steve Falgoni, and we're in my wood turning shop today, and we're going to talk about wood turning chucks. I was at the wood turning symposium last year, sitting in on a demo by Stuart Batty, who said, what's the difference between an English turner and an American turner? And the answer is, an English turner has one chuck and ten sets of jaws, and an American has ten complete chucks. And I said, what? Well, does that sound right? Well, maybe so. But anyway, today we're going to go through a whole host of wood turning chucks, talk a little bit about the different types, the history, and how they've evolved into the modern scroll chucks that we use today. And I hope that I can spread a little bit of insight into wood turning chucks. Wood turning as a hobby and an art form has enjoyed tremendous popularity in the last 30 or 40 years. Where way back in the day, wood turning was primarily, primarily utility bowls, utility pieces, spindles, candlesticks, chair legs. We've transitioned now to where uh, a large, large portion of what we're doing are decorative pieces such as natural edge bowls and similar items. And there arose a need for how to hold these pieces as you are moving the piece from inside to outside, finishing off the foot, let's say, of a bowl. Uh, in the early days, again, primarily the method for mounting a piece on to the lathe was with a face plate. Face, pa face plate screws into the back of the piece of wood, mounts onto the lathe, allows you to turn what you need, and then you remove it from the face plate, and how do you turn it around and mount it to finish off the opposite side of your piece? And there are such things as glue blocks, uh, screw chucks, several methods, but most of these methods require time and are just a little bit inconvenient. So probably in the 1970s or so into the early 80s, uh, there are a lot of different methods of, uh, I should say different designs of chucks that were coming out uh, with with the intention to be able to quickly and accurately hold a piece of wood as you turn from one side to another, remount it for finishing or whatnot. And um, here are some early ones. As the need for chucks arose in wood turning, one of the first uh, natural places to look was to the metal working industry, metal aids. So here we have two chucks designed for metalworking. Uh, these are South Bend chucks uh, for South Bend metal lathes and this is probably the most common chuck in metal turning the three jaw scroll chuck. There's an internal scroll gear here you turn a chuck key and these jaws move out in unison. This is very very good for holding uh, a, round a round piece such as a shaft and uh, the piece needs to be hard, steel, aluminum, again, metal, because these three points don't provide enough grip onto a piece of wood uh, to hold it secure. But what if you add more jaws? Well, here's, here's another chuck. This is called a four-jaw chuck. This is not a scroll chuck. What, again, scroll, chuck, scroll jaws meaning one key and the jaws move out in unison. This is a metalworking independent four-jaw chuck. Why would you need this? This is designed for holding odd shaped pieces, rectangular, square, eight sided, so all of these jaws can move in and out separately to clamp down on an irregular uh, rectangular piece. Each jaw is controlled individually. Again, very precise, very accurate, uh, not, doesn't provide enough holding power for wood turning, doesn't provide enough holding power for wood turning and also very time consuming to set up. However, chucks are very, very accurate. So the wood turning industry looked to the metalworking industry for guidance. And one of the first and best chucks that came along from the metalworking industry is this one. This chuck is made in Poland. It's a metalworking chuck uh, made by Bison or Toolmex and distributed in, through uh, Axminster. This is called the Super Precision Chuck. <clears throat> this is a four jaw scroll chuck. So one key operated here turns and opens the four jaws in unison. 
can hold a square piece, not rectangular, or a round piece. However, these have metal working jaws, one piece metal working jaws, which are designed to clamp down on a shaft or inside into a recess. So now we have some potential for woodworking. However, these jaws really, once again, do not provide enough grip and holding power for wood, which is much softer than the metal that this was designed for. So, what they decided to do was utilize another metalworking scenario and replace the one-piece jaws with a, what we call a two-piece jaw. And the two-piece jaw then you screw on accessory jaws. So now we have something here, useful for wood turn. Now by changing the jaws to a round surface contact area as opposed to the four point contact, we have a lot more gripping power and a, uh, a, a chuck that is much more suited for soft woods as opposed to metal. And of course the natural progression then is you can design all different shapes of jaws. So this chuck here once again is the Axminster chuck. Interchangeable back plates. A great great chuck. Sold for many many years. I think I bought my first one in about 1990 or so. Sold for many, many years, and it was the chuck that I recommended to fellow turners and students. So only one problem is that you can't get it anymore. So let's just take a step back for a second. We just talked about the Axminster Precision, Super Precision 4-Jaw Scroll Chuck. Let's take a step back. We've, we've determined that we like the idea of round face, round surface jaws as opposed to the point contact on a metalworking chuck. And let's look at some older designs. This is, uh, this is called the Handy Collet Chuck, probably popular in the 70s through the 80s. Don't think it's available anymore. This one here is called a Master Chuck, uh, might still be available. And this here is a Sorby Precision Combination Chuck. They use a sliding surface, dovetail components, a sliding surface, and when you clamp down on this ring, the jaws open or close. The problem is, from full open to full close, you only have about an eighth of an inch or so in change in diameter here. So your uh, tenon or recess that you make to clamp this onto has to be very, very precise. Again. Uh, I don't think these are available any longer. So again, just to show you, turning the scroll with the chuck key opens and closes the jaws. And it really has become what we call the modern chuck. So, let's look, as I mentioned, you can't get the Axminster Super Precision Chuck any longer. So let's take a look at what other types of chucks, and what other brands of chucks are out on the market today. One of the most common sizes of chucks uh, is the 4-inch is the chuck. And here we have a few. Again, the Axminster Chuck, which we talked about, uh, Hurricane HTC 100. This here is a uh, one-way stronghold chuck. And this here is um, an import from Asia. I believe it's a copy of a uh, Vicmark VM100 chuck. So let's look at some of the differences in design. The Axminster chuck, again, as I mentioned earlier, evolved from the metalworking industry. And the metalworking industry is one of the things that you do in metalworking is 
you buy a different backplate. So here the backplate screws on and is replaceable. Very, very precise. You actually turn this with the metal lathe on your lathe so you have the most accurate scenario that you can. Downside, of course, is expense, which is one of the reasons that the Axminster is not available anymore because they just couldn't make it in a price range suitable to compete with other wood, wood turning chucks. So I'll put the Axminster over to the side for a moment and we'll consider. Let's take a look at the backs of these chucks. One, two, three. First thing you notice, actually what I'm going to do is I'll swap this out and I'll bring in a Vicmark VM125 uh, VM and this here is a Hurricane HTC125. Okay, so some of the things that you'll see, again, four jaws, all removable, two set screws, uh, all of these chucks here have a very nice feature which when you extend the jaws all the way to the back there's a stop pin, in this case behind jaw number four, which prevents the, the chuck jaws from coming out. Coming out, which could be a potential safety hazard. The, uh, the Axminster does not have that. we look at the backs of the chucks, we see some similarities and some differences. The Hurricane and the Vicmark both have a sealed back, sealed back. Inside here, in both cases, you have a double scroll gear, protective cover, and the internal mechanisms, internal mechanisms are sealed and lubricated with grease. In the case of the one-way, you don't have your uh, internal uh, key. That's part of the chuck key. And also the back is open, so your lubrication here, I guess, is sawdust. In the case of the Axminster, as I mentioned, you replace the entire back plate. In the case of these, you change uh, what's called a spindle-threaded adapter. So. In the case of the, the Vicmark, the adapter is threaded and settles in with this uh, alignment. This would come out, this goes in. And in the case of the Hurricane and the uh, One Way, it's a tapered adapter. These come out and these get pulled in with, uh, in the uh, One Way's case, two screws, in the Hurricane's case, three screws which bring this down and seat it in accurately. Okay. Hurricane, Vigmark, one-way stronghold. Going back to the 4 inch chucks, VM100, HTC100, Axminster, Super Precision, Axminster Super Precision, and here's another Axminster chuck. Uh, this is called the Axminster Clubman. I, again, I don't think this is available. One of the nice things about the Axminster is, one of the nice things about the Axminster is the variety of jaws. So this chuck is, oh, probably five or six pounds. Uh, a bit too heavy for a mini lathe if I'm traveling or doing a demo at a club. So I would use the Clubman, <coughs> bring 
bring that to demonstrations with the mini lathe and the jaws would be interchangeable. Really, really nice feature. Again, these are considered 4 inch chucks. The HTC 100, while it is, this HTC has a 1 inch insert on it. Um, again, it's available 1 inch by 8, 1 and a quarter inch by 8, M33, and 1 and a half by 8. So I can use this chuck on my Powermatic to the new Powermatic 90, to the new Powermatics, to one ways, and mini legs. Another thing to consider is jaw travel. I'm here with the Axminster, two inches. Here's my jaw diameter in the closed position. And I can make my way out to three inches. So one inch of jaw travel on the Axminster Super Precision Chuck. Going over to the Hurricane HTC 100. These jaws come in at one and three quarters and open up to so I say one and three quarters. Three inches, so one and a quarter inch of jaw travel to one inch of jaw travel for the axiom stuff. If you feel that you need a larger jaw travel, certainly on a much heavier chuck, you can consider the HTC Hurricane 125, two and a quarter. Two and a quarter to four and a quarter. So almost two full inches, actually a little bit less, about an inch and seven eighths of jaw travel. See it all way, way up. There you have it, there are some things to consider. Jaw travel, whether or not you prefer a sealed back, the method of changing spindle adapters, the variety and selection of jaws. That's it. I hope that provided some insight to you on wood turning chucks. If you have any questions, just send us a message. Thanks for watching.